Okay, I'm joined here today with Hasni from the founder of the Big Heart Foundation in Syria. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like to welcome you and, and uh, you know, find out. I think our viewers are really interested to know more about uh, Big Heart in Syria. Well, thank you for having me here today. Uh, Big Heart Foundation was founded at the uh, beginning of the uh, civil unrest in Syria and it grew into a humanitarian development agency. Uh, the background is private sector, but we felt there is a serious need and uh, we wanted to come in and help. And that's uh, the mandate that we put forward. We've grown from few people in 2011 to now 375 staff inside Syria serving in four large areas of Hama, Idlib, parts of Homs and Aleppo. Uh, the main focus has been on the food security, livelihood, uh, shelter, uh, NFI, uh, wash program, and education. But the uniqueness of the story about Big Heart is the ability to reach deep and to actually touch uh, into areas that are not only hard to reach, truly, is they're very much has been forgotten. So as you know, different classifications of the humanitarian mandate, the siege areas hard to reach. And I think there are some areas that truly very few actors have had the uh, access and humbly some of the know-how to reach. And that's why Big Heart was able to make those moves. And it has been with risks. But I'm quite happy to see where we've done. Uh, and we have about 350,000 people we service every month, 65,000 households on the food security. We have agriculture program, we have a voucher program. So uh, unfortunately, I would like to say we have less people we serve, which means uh, the uh, conflict in Syria uh, has uh, been uh, reduced, but that's not what current reality shows us. You're also here as a member of the Syrian NGO Alliance, uh, and so this, you know, this summit, um, you're representing the Syrian NGO Alliance with your uh, with your colleagues. But what 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 does that mean practically um, in terms of the summit? Uh, how how did you find you know coming here and interacting with all the different actors? Do you feel that? Um, has the summit met your expectations? Yeah, I think uh, it's a very important question that you asked from the standpoint. We sat back and uh, as a steering committee, I'm also a uh, founding member of the Syrian NGO Alliance, which was established in 2013, and its background was to bring together Syrian actors to first coordinate, reduce any duplication, and mostly optimize our interventions in the various sectors. So we've grown to a level where we have 19 members, and the steering committee came together and said, look, there's something very unique, very new uh, happening in the world of humanitarian uh, voice, and we felt that the voice of the voiceless must be heard. We agree that we will participate. First and foremost is to have presence to tell our story and the story of the beneficiaries we have. And I think we've done that. Now in reference to logistical and planning, I think uh, in general uh, it was as optimal for a group that has not been uh, very well involved or attended many conferences. But on the positive side, it still was a forum that we met many new members. It has, in my understanding, uh, 5,000 attendees, and uh, with the variety of the different members of the SNA, I think we've had in excess of a couple hundred meetings with different groups. So that gave us exposure. I think where the areas of concern would be is we're talking about humanitarian mandate uh, with a very limited backdrop of the world leaders. Uh, the presence of that uh, is not visible if you take it uh, into reference to either G7 or G5 who are 
guardian of seeing what's happening, helping reshape policy. I think they're not visible. Uh, I know uh, it would have been an incredible activity to have their presence because there are many people from Syria that cannot get visas, so access to their voice was limited, and they happen to be present here. So it happens to be Turkey, it happens to be Istanbul, which many of the Syrians are actually accessible. But for that, we're hopeful that you know in the other summits there'll be more alignment on the coordination. But it would be simply uh, uh, an important ask that the G5 and G7 members participate in such a large event with the backdrop of Syria as it continues to bleed and the due politics of the area. And so, um, as a Syrian NGO who works inside of Syria, um, do you feel that like the summit um, agenda uh, has has really touched on the important issues that would improve your your operation and your organization's um, way of delivering um, aid? Has it really touched on these topics, or in any depth, or would you? What would you have liked to see in the in the agenda? I think it's a pretty large agenda, and it's a pretty busy forum where you have the round tables and you have the side events. Uh, as an overall, I think it's a lot of activity. Uh, at the specific events, I think our group uh, was able to make progress of having the dialogue. The, the, the question that I'm still not sure, and it's going to take us a little while, is how much of all of this information that has been either gathered by spirited debates or by disagreements sometimes filtered into, if not the word policy, actionable items. Yeah. I think today I, I don't see that happening. And I'm not, so the, some of the voids that I can uh, share with you is from the context of Syria. Mm. And I know this summit is not about Syria. Yeah. And this is about the world at large. And Syria is a, a piece of it. But the protection, the continuous uh, attacks to the hospitals, bakeries, schools, we're indiscriminately. So in essence, what you have is an issue where the corridor is not available and humanitarian practitioners are under attack. My own organization, since October, lost six employees, staff, that were active duty to this conflict. Uh, so I think that piece I felt uh, not only in the context of Syria as a whole, I didn't see it as visible and I would hope to have more time, more experts on it, and more discussion. Because in the hope that it will reduce, if not eliminate, uh, the conditions in South Syria. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you for, for sharing your uh, perspective with us. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Hopefully, if there is any other summit planned, I know in Bangladesh there will be the Global Migration Summit. So. Yeah, we're looking forward to the, you know, the continuation of this discussion. Well, thank you, Anna. Thank you for the opportunity. And may peace be brought on all of us. Thank you. Thank you.